The family reunion was located in Mount Magazine, Arkansas. The principal investigator is Dr. Peter K. Gregerson. He is basically looking for large families with multiple autoimmune diseases, which can include uh, multiple cirrhosis, rheumatoid arthritis, um, a bunch of the autoimmune thyroid disorders, uh, ulcerative colitis. There's a whole uh, a range of diseases he's looking for. It's so much fun to be part of the genetics department here at the Feinstein because there's a lot of research going on in very different areas from what I study. I study autoimmunity, but there's a lot of research going on in neurodevelopmental disorders, Alzheimer's disease, cancer, leukemia, and all of those diseases have a substantial genetic component which largely remains unknown. The Majors family is a very large family that had called us in about a year and a half ago and were very interested because they believe that they could be a great family for participation in our study. They said that they had several family members with autoimmune diseases and showed us this large family tree about everyone in her family with diseases. We spoke to her for about a month or so and then she said we actually have a family reunion coming up in July and she said would you be willing to possibly draw blood over there so you could you know get most of the participants that you're looking for so having everyone in one location is 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 ideal here at the Feinstein Institute we try and understand the, the molecular basis of disease the genetic basis of disease and develop new cures So having access to families such as the one you just heard described uh, is an incredibly powerful resource for research. Um, and having families like that participate is such a gift to us because we're able to follow genes through those families and understand how genes impact on the presence of disease. The genome really is like a book uh, that describes instructions for the individual but the book is not the same for everybody. While it's generally the same, has generally the same chapters and stories, the details differ. And knowing those differences in details is extremely important for understanding disease and understanding our characteristics in general. I have been diagnosed with uh, Alzheimer's disease, uh, forgetting things that I just shouldn't be forgetting. You know, I've never had a good memory, so I just, that's, I thought it was just, you know, okay, I'm older than I was 20 years ago when I didn't have a good memory. You know, it's just part of the aging process. At the Litwin Zucker Center, we do test new drugs for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. We need to see a lot of patients, both for the genetic studies and to select those patients who are suitable for testing of new drugs. I have a family history of Alzheimer's. A half-sister um, died of it. And, and, and that we have a cure for my daughter who could have this genetic thing, or my grandchildren, because who knows? they could have it too. So that's really, I think the reason is to hope for the cure for, some, for future generations because uh, it's a terrible disease, it really is. It's like the long goodbye. The whole environment, the whole sociology of science has actually, I think, been changed by the advent of genetics because it's made it obvious that one has to collaborate across disciplines in order to get to the answer. I have Huntington disease with a mood disorder. It's, it's hard for me because, um, mm. you know, my whole life she raised me, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, she, uh, you know, it's difficult to see what's happening to her because because you expect your mom to always be there for you and, and that kind of thing. And, you know, very early on, I had to become her caretaker. I'm concerned about my risk for uh, developing Huntington's, you know. I know that there's a 50% chance that I have it. I'm Jane's sister and our mom had Huntington's disease and Jane and I are both diagnosed. So uh, that's why we feel like there's a need for research.
The interesting thing and the unique thing about Huntington's disease, I think in many ways, that presents an opportunity for therapy is that people who are going to get Huntington's disease but who are still normal in every way and do not have any signs of the disease can be identified through a simple genetic test. So it offers the opportunity if you have a therapy that would slow the progression to give it to people before they get the disease and delay the onset of the disease. We've been uh, designing and hope to get funded soon a, uh, a national study where we would be looking at thousands of siblings, initially of lupus patients. This is also being done by collaborators of mine for rheumatoid arthritis siblings. And I think it will probably be done for many other diseases as well. So we are very, very hopeful, and I think that this is a generally held notion, that if we intervene earlier, we can do it with much more modest interventions, things that do not compromise your ability to ward off viral and bacterial infection. I have rheumatoid arthritis. I was diagnosed when I was 21, and they had mentioned that they were doing a study on genetics and how your family plays a part. So I, of course, <laughs> enrolled everybody in the study, and little by little, everyone was tested, and basically, I have rheumatoid arthritis, and my two older sisters were also diagnosed. I'm a strong believer in research, and also that's the only way to figure out new cures. I mean, if you really want to get at the root of the disease, you have to figure out where it came from and why. Is there a genetic component? Is it environmental? My name's Kevin Tracy. I'm the director of the Feinstein Institute. This is a place where 800 scientists, investigators, and staff come to work each day with the hope of curing disease. We recently moved into this new facility which in addition to being the home to several laboratories and a clinical research center, is also the site of a new conference center where we host scientific meetings and international congresses where scientists can come together. It's not uncommon to walk down the halls of the Feinstein Institute and find laboratory scientists talking uh, over a cup of coffee or over a, a recently published journal and coming up with new ideas in a very interactive way that can't come from an email or a text message or a phone call. Cures and research come from people working together in a collaborative way. That's a unique environment where you can have people with tremendous expertise in various diseases now uh, using our genetic program here to understand the genetic basis of those diseases. We all have a sense here at the Feinstein Institute that we are participating as a family to make uh, new discoveries that can impact on both our own family and your family and the community at large. And that's why we're so devoted to pushing it forward to making the community aware and making all the families in the community aware of how important genetics is and that you as a family can actually help. My name is Mary Foley and I have multiple sclerosis. My family and I are involved in the Feinstein Institute study of autoimmune disease. When I was recently in Arkansas and one of my cousins and his wife come in, make a beeline for me, they were just grinning from ear to ear and said, Mary, you know that gene study that the people came for last year? and that family tree map that you gave us? Well, you helped our son Doyle. He had lost 90 pounds in a few months and couldn't sleep, and we didn't know what was going on, so we thought, well, maybe it's for something to do with the thyroid problems. Went to the doctor in Little Rock with that family tree and told him the symptoms, of the sleeplessness and weight loss and the irritability, and showed him that map of the family and the doctor looked at it and looked at Doyle and said, well, I'm going to do some blood tests, but I can tell you right now, you have Graves' disease, and you're also the best organized patient that's ever walked into my office. So we're already seeing benefit, and that's really why we wanted to get involved. It's quite likely that future generations will enjoy a better quality of life because of advances that are occurring today.